Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Medal of Honor Vanguard for PlayStation 2 and Wii. What you're seeing here is the Wii version. This is a first person shooter and the 10th game in the Medal of Honor series. It was developed by EA Los Angeles and Budcat Creations ported it over to the Wii, and it was published by Electronic Arts in 2007. It went on to get a pretty mixed to negative reception with a lot of the complaints being that it recycles a lot of elements from previous Medal of Honor games and generally doesn't look all that great. But oh don't worry, I will certainly address those in a moment. For now, just understand this. I went into this knowing that the Wii controls were going to be a problem, because they are a problem with every single first-person shooter on the Wii. And while those controls are certainly awful and certainly make the experience worse than the PS2 version, they actually don't make it that much worse than the PS2 version because the frame rate on the PS2 version is atrocious which in turn renders the slightly better controls completely moot. So let's go ahead and delve into this thing and find out what it's like overall. Well, as far as presentation goes, you're going to find that this has a very strong feeling of deja vu if you've played Medal of Honor European Assault, and that's because it straight up lifts models, animations, textures, etc. straight from Medal of Honor European Assault, which it's worth noting didn't really look all that great even when it came out. It came out in 2005, this game came out in 2007, and between the releases of Medal of Honor European Assault and Medal of Honor Vanguard, we had the release of two new consoles which were the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. So not only is it using models and animations and textures from two years prior to the game's release, but slightly touched up for the Wii version, but you also have basically two years of a brand new generation of consoles and games just looking considerably better than this. Not to mention that 2007 is the same year we got Crisis, so this looked positively archaic compared to that. But to be fair, this is a PlayStation 2 and a Wii game versus a top-of-the-line PC game for that time. It's not fair to directly compare the likes of this to Crisis, of course, but that's the thing. It came out in the same year. They were contemporary games. You can't really ignore it entirely. This means that it ultimately looked very dated compared to its contemporaries, let alone a decade later. And it also doesn't help that a lot of the sound effects are directly ripped from Medal of Honor European Assault. Now, don't get me wrong, that's better than ripping them from, say, Medal of Honor Allied Assault or Pacific Assault, but this amount of asset reuse is pretty jarring if you've played that previous game. You're like, wow, this sounds really familiar. And even worse than that, the soundtrack is ripped from previous Medal of Honor games. I'm not even talking about, oh, well, they did some remixes or new versions of previous songs. No, I mean, they literally took songs straight from the previous game files and just stuck them into Vanguard. For example, the main menu music is exactly the same main menu music as Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Now, I'm at the point where I can barely even tell any of the Medal of Honor games' soundtracks apart from one another, particularly the ones by Michael Giacchino. But in this particular instance, I actually got somewhat lucky, because I had been working on Medal of Honor Allied Assault, making sure it was up and running for when I'm going to review it later on this month. Which meant that I had the main theme kind of fresh in my memory, because I'd been messing around with the options menu a lot. Then I go to Vanguard, I'm like, wow, that sounds really familiar. Let me go back and check. Oh, it's exactly the same. So I went back and I looked through the entire Medal of Honor Vanguard soundtrack, and I found that there was only one track in the entirety of the soundtrack that is actually not from a previous Medal of Honor game. I say previous because, as far as I can tell, it was composed specifically for Airborne, and then they just decided, you know what, we've got this on hand, Airborne isn't quite out yet, so let's just use it in Vanguard. It'd almost be funny if it weren't so incredibly lazy. About the only aspects of presentation that they didn't just rip from previous Medal of Honor games is the level layouts, as well as the voice acting, which is still decent voice acting. I mean, it is still a AAA game when you get down to it, it's just that the voice acting ends up being very average at best. It works well enough to move the action along, but it's not something that you're ever going to get remotely attached to. And I know this bit's a bit nitpicky, but there's one particular character who says, use your Garand, when the actual pronunciation is Garand, and the slightly less egregious pronunciation is Garand. I don't know where they got Garand. Use your top gun up close! You can run to pick him off from a distance! But while that one kind of amused me, it really is indicative of a general lack of care towards the voice direction, and that ends up actually becoming a bit problematic later on, when you find moments that are supposed to be vaguely emotional, or at least it seems like they're trying to be, 
and they end up just being incredibly mediocre at best. But as lazy as the presentation is, what really matter here are the story and the gameplay. The story in this is that you play as Frank Keegan, who is a member of the 82nd Airborne Division, and you start off by going into Operation Husky. This of course means that you do an airdrop into Sicily, and this introduces a mechanic that I'll get to more in a moment, the parachuting mechanic. And after you land, you're basically tasked with fighting your way through a small town and then finally getting to a bunker that you have to destroy some naval guns at. And after this rather short mission, you are sent off to be part of Operation Neptune, which is the invasion of Normandy, only instead of doing a para drop in you go in in a glider. And after you complete that particular mission, you become the squad sergeant, which moves you on into Operation Market Garden, and then finally Operation Varsity. And as far as the actual story of each mission goes, it's basically, you are an American soldier fighting in German-occupied Europe during World War II, that is all. As far as the game is concerned, Keegan is not actually a character, he's simply player one. Which would be fine if the game didn't take itself very seriously, but it's pretty obvious that it's trying to be taken seriously, it's just failing miserably at it. You see, by this point in the series, they weren't really doing the James Bond mixed together with Rambo thing that they had been doing in previous games, but rather they were trying to do more what Call of Duty had been doing, which was boots on the ground, you're a soldier in the thick of things. Problem with that being that they don't do it with any degree of finesse whatsoever. The dialogue is almost exclusively utilitarian. It just tells you what you need to know as far as the battle's going, what your objectives are, and what you should watch out for, but other than that, they don't really do anything with it. There are a few attempts at humor here and there, but they're very weak, and they come across as rather jarring and obviously out of place. Like, the developers knew they had to try to lighten the mood, but they just didn't know how to do it. And when it comes to the narration you get between missions, it is just completely flat and lifeless. The actor who does that just ends up sounding incredibly bored the entire time, and the lines themselves just come across as somebody scribbled it down on a napkin and said, good enough. And since the story, narration, and dialogue end up being so incredibly weak and pretty much as thick as tissue paper, you end up just disregarding them entirely once you get into the game proper. You may think to yourself that it's perfectly logical to assume that since they didn't really work on the story and the characters and the dialogue, that obviously they more than made up for it in the gameplay department, right? Wrong. This is one of the laziest, most pathetic excuses of a World War II shooter I have ever played. There is exactly one unique mechanic in this entire game, and it's something that Airborne did better. And that is the parachuting mechanic, where on the Wii version, you use the motion controls in order to control your descent. Now keep in mind, when I say motion controls, I mean the only way you can control this game is with the nunchuck. So you've got a Wiimote in one hand, a nunchuck in another, and you just hold them out in front of you in order to just drop straight and that's pretty much all you want to do because if you try to angle yourself, you're going to get off center and you're going to end up falling to your doom. Which is a really great way to start the level, don't you think? But here's the thing, it might as well just be a cutscene because it doesn't actually have any real gameplay implications. You barely get a say in where you're actually going to land and it's always going to be within the same specific area no matter what you do. And since the game is so ridiculously linear, it's not like it matters where exactly you land because you're always going to be funneled into the exact same place. Thus, the parachuting mechanic, which, like I said, is the only original thing in this game as far as the Medal of Honor series goes, is just a pointless gimmick in this particular game. Like I said, Airborne handled that a bit better, but that's not saying much. So with the only somewhat original mechanic and the only real gimmick of the game out of the way, what does that even leave? Well, it leaves an extremely linear first-person shooter that is some of the most bog-standard World War II crap you'll ever see. It's all the same kind of crap you've been doing since the original Medal of Honor came out. Go to location, wipe out all the enemies within that location, maybe you have to plant a charge. That's pretty much it. Occasionally they'll throw a different enemy at you that you can't take out through normal means and that's basically just, here, have a tank to deal with. Oh, by the way, there's a bazooka right next to you so you don't have any problems. To make matters worse, you have a two-weapon limit like just about every other console shooter at that point, and just like every other console shooter at that point, it has regenerating health. Gone is the health pack system of previous Medal of Honor games. Gone is the revive system of Medal of Honor European Assault. Hell, gone is the adrenaline mechanic from Medal of Honor European Assault. There are only two things that differentiate this from just about any other generic shovelware World War II shooter out there. Those are the parachuting mechanic, which I've already mentioned is completely worthless as an actual gameplay mechanic, and 
the fact that occasionally you might find an upgrade for one of your weapons that will give you a telescopic sight for your Garand or a drum magazine for your Thompson, but it only lasts for that one level. Which may seem alright at first until you realize that the game is three hours long. You heard me right. This game is about as long as one of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movies. And I'm not talking about the extended cuts, I'm talking about the theatrical cuts. And quite honestly, those would be a much better use of your time because they're really, really fantastic movies, and Medal of Honor Vanguard has absolutely no redeeming qualities whatsoever. The shooting mechanics are subpar, especially on the Wii version, because on the Wii version it has the same problem that every other first-person shooter on the Wii has. The controls tend to spaz out quite a lot because you're having to use the sensor bar rather than any sort of really precise input. You have to keep your arms perfectly straight the entire time you are playing, otherwise the controls will go, oh, well I guess you want to go spazzing out and turning really fast in this one direction. Which you may be seeing some of that during the gameplay footage. Also fun is that, like most other Wii games, you can't just sit on the couch and play it. No, you have to be standing, because the Wii sensor bar does not like you actually sitting there at an angle on your couch playing comfortably. No, you have to be standing so you can get straight on input into the sensor bar itself. It ends up being a complete chore to do anything with the motion controls or the actual aiming of the Wii mode whenever you're messing around with the Wii version. On the PS2 version, at least you can play it like a normal console first person shooter. It just happens to run like total garbage on the PlayStation 2. I actually went and looked up footage of PS2 across several people playing it just to make sure that I was not just seeing, oh well they were using an emulator and the emulator sucked or something like that. But no, it's not a result of emulation, the game just actually actually runs like total garbage on the PlayStation 2. I mean it dips into single digit frame rates all the frickin' time and it mostly runs at about 20 to 25 frames a second. And hell, even the Wii version actually has performance problems. It's not anywhere near as severe as those, but it still has them. I did notice the frame rate regularly dipping into the 20s and lower and it was just infuriating to deal with. And that's irritating enough, but if the frame rate is as bad as I was seeing it on the footage that I saw of the PlayStation 2 version, then I can't even understand why people would remotely enjoy the PlayStation 2 version, let alone even be able to play it. Not to mention, there are problems like the damage modeling being rather inconsistent. Sometimes it instantly drops an enemy, sometimes it doesn't, and it doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason as to why. I've shot enemies in the leg or the body and they've instantly died, whereas I've shot them in the head and it just knocked their helmet off and they were fine. It just doesn't make any sense at all. And before you start mentioning trying different weapons, I tried every weapon in the game. There's no weapon in this thing that has consistent damage output. And the more I looked into it, the more it seemed like there was just a problem with the hitboxes in general, where it seemed like you should be able to get a hit, but it just doesn't register as one or it registers as a hit in the wrong place. Regardless, it makes the game incredibly frustrating because you're sitting there just wailing on enemies and they're not going down, whereas on other enemies you shoot them once and they go flying. And if there's one thing that a first person shooter needs to be, it is consistent, especially in the way the weapons handle and the way they have an effect on target. And it seems the devs didn't get the memo on that one. To make matters worse, the enemy AI is not very smart. A lot of the times they'll be doing incredibly dumb things like standing there letting you shoot them or just smack them upside the head. They will be fairly inaccurate when they should not be inaccurate where, for example, you're standing right in their face. They should be unable to miss you at that point. But you will find that a lot of the times they do in fact miss. It's not anywhere near as bad as Medal of Honor Rising Sun or Frontline, but it's still pretty bad. But that's really not much of a consolation when everything else in this game was so lazily slapped together and not remotely polished. It's like the developers put absolutely no effort into this game whatsoever and they just shoveled it out to make a quick buck off of the Medal of Honor name. I mean hell, they couldn't even be bothered to put in online multiplayer, it's still split screen only on both platforms. And while having a split screen option is fine, split screen only by 2007 was positively archaic. And when you bring it all together, it ends up being one of the absolute laziest first-person shooters I have ever seen come out of a AAA studio. As I said before, it has absolutely no redeeming qualities. Even the things that it ripped from Medal of Honor European Assault that were good in that game were not good in Vanguard. They made it worse in every single way. 
And while I can sort of cut Rising Sun and Frontline a bit of slack, there is absolutely no excuse for the laziness and the pathetic overall design of Medal of Honor Vanguard. It has absolutely zero redeeming qualities whatsoever, because anything that could remotely redeem it was simply ripped from a previous Medal of Honor game and just thrown in there without any real thought put into it whatsoever. It is painfully obvious that this game was rushed out the door as quickly as possible to make a buck on the people who hadn't switched over to the new consoles yet. It is shovelware of the worst, most condescending, most insulting kind. And it should not only be avoided like the plague, but it should be something that the developers and EA should be straight up ashamed of. I give it a 0.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.